Hey everyone, Dr. Shook here. I hope you're doing well today. In today's live stream, what I want to share with you guys is really the number two cause of knee pain that we see uh, that is not commonly addressed. So the number two cause that we see, I should put the number two here, is is nerve compression. Now, nerve compression, you might, you might be thinking, well, how can, how can like a compressed nerve create a problem with my knee? Well, the, the issue is, is that the nerves that go down into your legs, which if we use this, this picture is supposed to represent one of your legs. This bone, this black, represents the upper leg, so this would be your femur, so your thigh, okay, would be here. This lower part, this bone, that you see like half of a bone represents the lower leg, which is the tibia. Now when they join together, that's your knee joint. So where they come together here, all the pink stuff that's in the center is cartilage. And the red stuff that's on the outside, this down here is your calf muscle. And it comes up and the muscle actually crosses the knee and attaches to the bone above. Then the muscles above, the thigh, the, they call it the quadricep, quad for four, muscles cross over and attach to the lower to the lower bone here. So they help to improve and stabilize the knee, but they are controlled, the muscles are completely controlled by the nerves here. So these orange things represent nerves that come from the lower back. They flow down through your buttocks, into the thigh, into the leg, and go all the way down into the foot. So if you've ever had sciatica or back pain that travels down the leg, that's likely due to the fact that that nerve at your lower back was getting compressed, okay? There was inflammation there. And that compression causes the nerve to hurt. It also decreases the nerve's function. And if it's bad enough, your leg might feel numb, you might feel shooting pains, and if the nerve is, is significantly compressed, compressed and damaged, the muscles will literally get smaller and it's what we call atrophy. And that's a, that's a big, big problem. This is something, you know, when we're looking at like what's causing, if you have knee pain, if you have arthritis of the knee, if you've torn your meniscus, what is going on here that where you're, you're, losing, um, you're losing the, um, what has set the stage, I should say, for that knee to degenerate, especially if it's arthritic in nature? You know, there's, there's a lot of different things that can come into play here, but one of the things that you have to check, this is one of many that I'll talk to you guys about on uh, live videos, is, is this, this issue of neurological control. So it's nerve muscle control of the knee. That's called neuromuscular control. If you have a problem with the nerves, so this could happen because of a, a lower back problem where the nerves have been damaged. This can also happen due to peripheral nerve issues, what we call, like, like so diabetics, for example, people that have diabetes, they have, unfortunately, have a, a high rate of something called peripheral neuropathy, which means these nerves in the legs can be affected and damaged. That can influence and cause problems with their control of the muscles. So when these issues are occurring, of course, depending upon the problem, we would want to address it differently. But let's say that you're having nerve compression at the lower back. Okay, let's stay with that. If you have nerve compression of the lower back, then one of the ways that we would help to support your knee is we would, we would not only address the knee itself, but we would also look at the lower back and we would probably work and do some very special uh, therapies and take some special approaches. So the first thing that we would want to do is obviously figure out, you know, is this nerve compression an issue? So we would do an exam. That's the first thing we would do, right? We would do an exam. We would do a neurological exam, so it would just be a physical exam. I'd have you wearing shorts, and uh, we would do sensory touching to see how your, what your sensation is, and we would look at the different nerves that come in the leg and see if they're being affected. We would check reflexes. We would do things like light touch, and we'd have, it's a different type of neurological exam than just reflexes. We, we go in more detail than that. We look at vibration, position sense. We look at a lot of different things to understand if this is happening. Now, of course, if there was back pain, and there were some back issues, then we would look and we, we could do some of the more classical exams for the back. We would check the back. We would probably take x-rays of the back if they haven't been taken, and we would look and see what the structure looks like to see if it would be appropriate for us to use some of these therapies, this, the, well, the primary therapy we're going to talk about here. So number one, it starts with, is it a problem, of course? And then beyond that, from a therapeutic approach, we would look at something called...
spinal and we're going to use decomp just to keep it from going all the way across the, the page. We would use something called non-surgical spinal decompression therapy. Now spinal decompression therapy is focused on, when we're talking about the spine here, what it, what it does is it gently takes weight off of the lower back, taking pressure off of the nerves, pressure off of the disc. So the, the spine is basically made up, in case you don't, you don't know this, I'll give you a little rundown on it. So you've got bones of the spine, we call them vertebrae, and they're basically like blocks like this, right? Well between those vertebrae, those blocks, there's a, something called a disc. Now the disc is basically this really tough cartilage with a, a center in it that's almost like a jelly-like substance. And what, what will happen is, is that you can, this disc, uh, and the spine, it can, you can have what they call a slip disc, uh, a herniated disc, a bulging disc, where this disc, what it will do is it will start to bulge out and the material inside of it can move to one side or in one direction. Sometimes it can even rupture, it can, it can split and you can have it leak out further. Now, you know, the problem is, is you've, got, you've got nerve endings in that disc, but the bigger issue is is that these nerves, these large nerves that control the knee and the lower leg, they exit the spine because behind the spine, these bones, is your spinal cord. And you have nerves that exit and come out at each level here. So if this disc, is there, if there's damage to it, if it's, if it's degenerating and breaking down, if it's bulging, if there's a disc herniation, it can compress the nerve. And then you have pain, then you have pain down the length of the nerve here. And what happens is it'll affect the nerves it decreases the, the nerve function, which decreases its ability to control the leg and the knee. So what we do is we use the decompression, and we will take it and apply it. It's very gentle. You lay down on a table. We just we put you on the special table. It's very gentle, and it gently pulls and takes weight off of the lower back. It actually pulls the spine one end from the other very gently. It does it in a pulsing fashion. We can control it, uh, the weight, the pressure, the time that you're on there. Uh, very specifically, and it creates separation here, creating a suction. So it helps to take this material and pull it back towards the center, which is what we need. So it can help it to take pressure off the nerve. It also helps to pull in nutrients from the outside. So that's important because these discs, they, they don't have very much blood supply. And so this, this decompression can help to pull in nutrients to the disc to help it with healing, okay? So that's a really important factor as well. So we take pressure off of the nerve. We are actually helping the disc to heal. We're taking pressure off of the nerve, which can improve neurological function uh, here as well, because we, we improve nerve health. We, we can improve um, better function and control of the extremity of the, of the leg. So I hope that helps you to understand the number two cause of knee pain is nerve comp compression. It's actually not the knee. It's something that's more distant from the knee that creates uh, compression and uh, uh, disruption of the nerves control of the muscle. So I hope this helps you guys out. If you have any questions, if you'd like to have an opinion on your knee pain problem and what's going on to see if any of the therapies and the, the approach that we take might be beneficial, you can just visit hickoryspine.com. You can click on our knee pain, um, on our knee pain page. It will take you there and you can learn a little bit more about it. And uh, you could also call our office at 828-324-0800. If you'd like to talk to my staff, they'd be glad to help you out and answer some more questions. But I hope this helps you guys better understand some of the complexities that can, some of the things that can affect, contribute to knee pain. We've got to look at the lower back because of the nerve control. So I hope this helps you guys out. I appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Talk to you again soon.